Okay, Baruch Hashem, praise Almighty God. Hold on a second. We are here, Baruch Hashem, let's say Shabbos of Parshat Vayatul Pekure, Parshat Sechodesh. It's the big, famous minig by Hasidim to tell on Shabbos, the Chodesh, the three stories from the Koshen Tzimagid. So we, and there are actually many stories, uh, different versions. So we told three of the stories in the last video, and so you can watch the other video. And now a fourth story um, that's, uh, again, traditionally they say that the Holy Rebbe, Rebbe Israel, the Magid from Koshen uh, told the, in the that he should tell these stories, he would tell these stories in the merit of Rabbi Elimelech from Luzhensk. Schusigono happens to be Masi Shabbos, always good to tell stories. I'm in the middle of Malava Malka now to telling these stories. And uh, so here's the last story uh, from from these uh, from these stories for Pasha Sachodesh. And uh, again these are to tell these stories is a blessing that we should be able to make the livelihood to afford the Passover holiday and for the whole year. So the last story is that there was a, a poor Jew named Moshe who was a tailor. And um, he was, uh, you know, going along, something it turned out after the, all the details, uh, not always told, but um, there was a Paritz, a feudal lord, who, um, a little bit anti-Semite, and he, he was, he got very drunk, and um, he almost died, and this Jew saved him. So the part of his wife, she was very happy, she's like, you know, we're going to make you a serf in our, you know, I see you don't have, you're not supporting yourself, we're going to make you, we're going to bring you, there are different versions of whether, he was already just a serf, and that was a story, not, no mention about him being uh, a tailor. The other version was that she brought him in not as a serf, but to work in the in the in the in the Lord's manner as the Lord's tailor, Lord and tailor, I guess. So the um, anyway, it comes along that the, uh, the the Lord asks the Jew, who was I guess either his servant or his serf, whatever. He says, "I'm going. Uh, how's how's the how's your life going? You know." He says, "Oh, thank God. God provides me everything I need." And uh, he said, "What do you mean, God provides you? I provide you. My wife provides you. What do you mean, God provides you?" He said, "No, no. You're you're good uh, messengers from God. That God is providing to me through you." He said, oh, "Kind of." The, so the Lord got very upset. He said, you think God takes care of you? All right, let God take care of you, because I'm not letting my wife pay you anymore. All right. Nope, he goes back home. He, he's stuck. He, it's just before Pesach, just before Passover. It's an expensive holiday. But what can I do? The, the, the Lord's not paying me. I know there's a Lord in heaven. He's going to pay me. I don't need the feudal Lord to pay. Uh, so he lived right, in, you know, he's, it must have been a serf, because he was in the nearby to the, the, to the manor. And uh, meanwhile, the feudal lord goes back to his manor, and he says, yeah, I'm going to go count my money. And he, uh, he has his gold coins, and he's biting them, see if they're real. And some of them, if they're a little dirty, he puts them in his mouth to wash them off. And uh, he also happened to have a little pet monkey. He loved this little pet monkey. And the monkey followed him into his, uh, his treasure house, and they look at, and, and the monkey sees the the lord the feudal lord is putting coins in his mouth. So monkey see monkey do. What's the he starts doing the same thing. The lord doesn't pay attention to the monkey, gets up, he leaves, he's done cleaning and counting the money, checking if it's real. And the monkey continues there putting these coins in his mouth. He doesn't know that he's taking them out after it. He just starts swallowing them, eating them, swallowing all these coins. He eats a bunch of coins, a lot of money. His belly's full of coins, and it's not healthy. The monkey dies. Uh, so here, the Lord comes back. Oh, my beloved pet monkey is here dead. But you know what? I, 
I know what I can do with this monkey carcass. I'm going to take, play a little practical joke on this Moshe the tailor, this Jew, who, uh, who thinks that God is uh, providing for him. I'm going to take the dead monkey and throw him into, the, into his house. And he didn't know why the monkey died. He just found a dead monkey. He didn't even notice the coins were missing. Apparently he had a lot. So he goes he, and he takes the, the monkey and the, the Jew's window was open. He takes it and throws it in the window. So meanwhile, this monkey lands on the dining room table, the kitchen table, whatever, and out pops a few coins. So he's like, wait a second. He picks it up. It's like he will feel the coins inside. He takes a knife, cuts open the monkey, filled with coins. Oh, here I have. God provide for me. I have everything I need for Pesach. And so he went and bought what he needed for, for the Yontiv. And uh, the Lord comes by. Pesach. He said, what's going on here? Where did you get this money from for, for this big feast? I said, well, this monkey flew in my window filled with coins. So the few the Lord realized, you know, I guess you're right. It's God who provides for you. And I'm just this, I'm just this messenger. So he admitted that it's God. And so too, we should learn from that and recognize that God is the one who provides for us. But also, um, just as this uh, Moshe the tailor, this Jew, had enough money for the holiday of Pesach, so too should we and the whole Kal Yisrael and the whole world have enough money for Pesach and for the whole year round. So it should be blessed with a good week and only good news and uh, hopefully in the merit of telling these stories, spreading these stories, uh, things should get better in the world and, uh, and uh, God should look down on us as we have faith in him and remembering him. Um, we read today about